Okay, thank you, Pierre, and thank you, Neil. I'm really happy today to be part of this peer exchange. Again, I'm Angela Nash Mercado. I'm with Johns Hopkins University Center for Communication Programs and the Knowledge for Health Project. And it's really my pleasure to introduce you to the Implementing Best Practices Knowledge Gateway. Implementing Best Practices, or IBP, is an innovative partnership committed to improving reproductive health. And today I will just talk about a um, brief uh, introduction for the IBP consortium in general and then delve into some details on the IBP Knowledge Gateway. And I'll highlight some of our experiences developing and facilitating communities of practice on the Knowledge Gateway. So the Implementing Best Practices Initiative is really dedicated to scaling up what works in family planning and reproductive health. And this is a consortium that has been in existence for 13 years now. slides here. So we're really supported by a diverse range of partners from donors like the USAID and international organizations like WHO and UNFPA. Uh, we possess a really broad spectrum of skills in the field of research and program management and technical support to countries. And again, our goal is really to network with networks at the global, regional, country levels to reduce duplication of efforts and harmonize approaches, really maximize the use of resources to ensure that best practices are identified and scale up to improve access to quality reproductive health care, in particular family planning services, maternal and neonatal health, adolescent reproductive health, integrated STI HIV prevention care and treatment services. So IBP members all have funded country programs and we all have materials and tools and experiences and lessons to share with each other. If we were to work alone, we would just be uh, individual islands of excellence. But working together, we're part of a more powerful force, a community of practice with resources that are capable of achieving greater economies of scale. So these are some of the, uh, the founding partners and new members who are part of the consortium. So you can see it's really broad, broad reach. And we know from our experience working in countries and from literature reviews that we and others have undertaken that our biggest challenge really is not in producing new knowledge, but rather in finding ways to more effectively transfer and exchange and apply knowledge with the goal of changing and improving practices for family planning and reproductive health. So we're really working to overcome the knowledge to practice gap. So that was our, our, our challenge. And our solution, or communities of practice, created around particular family planning and reproductive health technical areas and why using this approach of communities of practice. I think uh, those in the presentation today know some of the benefits. Uh, really, members can learn from what others are doing. You can share information, insight, advice, jointly <coughs> create tools, uh, promote collaboration in general, share lessons, save time and, and money doing so, and really cross boundaries of distance and organization, different hierarchies and time. So we needed a platform for our community practice work. And the WHO Department of Reproductive Health and Research in collaboration with J2CCP, my organization, and other IBP partners research, designed, and launched the IBP Knowledge Gateway back in September 2004. And this is a very simple tool that uses web-based technology to function through emails to support establishing knowledge networks or communities of practice. And it's designed to work in technically challenged countries or areas of low bandwidth so folks can share and exchange and transfer, discuss, and access knowledge. And again, it's very simple to use.
the gateway is one part of a comprehensive knowledge management strategy that was developed by IBP partners to share technologies and processes and information. And in addition to leveraging funding, WHO does a lot more. It supports, uh, through JHCP and others, the management of the gateway. Each year we support a program of work enhancements that are available to all organizations that are managing their own customized, branded, owned communities of practice on the Knowledge Gateway. We also support a number of global discussion forums on a variety of, of topics. Also, WHO has brokered, taught, and facilitated um, at least six independently managed communities, including Z groups. So again, we support other organizations and agencies to establish and launch and manage their own customized branded communities. And what you see here are the online spaces, uh, which is an important part of the, the Knowledge Gateway. But it's also very important that users can access everything via email. And again, it's useful in settings where individuals have sporadic access to the web, but easy access to email. So what we're really doing is providing the guidance and tools on how best to use the Knowledge Gateway for communities of practice. So this following slide here has some of the current statistics for the Knowledge Gateway. Nearly 43,000 members from more than 200 countries with hundreds of communities of practice, all on different topics relating to our work and beyond. And from our experience, uh, these are some of the design principles we like to follow. Um, and keep in mind when developing and moderating your own community of practice. So as your community is evolving, so does the structure, and you may need to change or update your structure depending on what the community is used for. Open dialogue between internal and external perspectives are critical, and you need to find a way to link the community to outside sites or experts or other communities. It's important to recognize and accept different levels of participation. Most community practice members never openly participate, but you know they are they are seeing your messages. It's also critical to develop both public and private community spaces where you can encourage people to communicate one on one as well as through a larger group. And really in the beginning focus on, on your value, both to your individual and members and an organization it is another important piece of design. And you can combine routine events with um, new exciting milestone events or discussion forums. And in general, try to maintain a rhythm for the community. So really, part of that is having somebody who is a community leader. And so once you have your core group of dedicated members, you want to identify potential members who can help keep others engaged. So just like a teacher in a classroom would plan activities to keep students engaged, your, your COP leader must think about different activities to keep the members engaged and enthusiastic about the community. So you can send surveys out or email-based questionnaires periodically to find out what members are interested in, what topics they want to discuss or focus on, or resources they want to share. So engaging and maintaining a COP requires similar considerations when developing any kind of community. You need to stay focused on your, your goals and objectives and keep information current. And your members will be more likely to refer to the communities and others and will continue to participate as things evolve. So again, your community leader um, supports that relationship and trust building. They seed and feed discussions. Um, they direct knowledge nuggets to people, and they, they work to network within the community. And they also do some, you know, cleanup activities as well. And these are some additional strategies here for fostering engagement. And I want to point out that the online discussions are a great way to engage people, and this can be done strictly via email as can all these other, other pieces as well, you know, creating e-newsletters that are going out via email. Again, these are some of our, our findings on what makes a successful community of practice. Um, attractive purpose and goals grabs 
and maintains attention. Also, knowing the value and benefits. You know, I'm more apt to journal in a community where I know I'm going to learn and be able to share knowledge. And we found that blending face-to-face -face with online activities whenever possible is a, a big, big win. But again, you need that, um, that skilled leader and facilitator, very critical role. And the important thing to remember is that this can be done via email. Uh, and I want to leave you with some of these criteria for success that we've outlined after our many years of experience facilitating our own communities and helping others on the Knowledge Gateway. And what we have on the Gateway are access to different um, tools and resources for community leaders. So we offer people step-by-step step what's needed to create your community from creating goals and activities and communicating with your members, building your audience. Um, and you can go to the Knowledge Gateway, uh, knowledge-gateway.org, or visit the IBP website at ibpinitiative.org, and you can find out uh, more information and, and explore and see if there are any communities you're interested in. So thank you.